So for negative and rational exponents, um, in this section, we're a lot less concerned with getting a specific final answer. Like, I'm not going to tell you simplifying something all the way always means that it looks exactly like this, um, because in calculus, we're a lot less concerned about that and more concerned that you just know the rules and can work with them. So I will often be asking you to, um, in the course, get your answers simplified in kind of a certain way, not because that's the right way and that's the way you have to do it, but because that's maybe the way that shows up in a lot of multiple choice answers and maybe that's the hardest way of simplifying it or something. So that's a skill that I want you to have. But then also knowing that in free response questions, you can choose not to simplify it and your answer is still equally correct. So, and that's something you'll start to learn in upper level mathematics is that um, equivalent answers get the same amount of credit, whether or not they've been simplified completely, which is kind of nice, but also kind of frustrating, I guess, um, if you like to know that the answer is the same every time. So the instructions for these examples are just going to say simplify. Um, and it's going to feel a little bit vague, but really just remember that this section is practicing the rules and knowing how to flip back and forth between um, rational exponents and roots, radicals, um, and things like that. So actually, before we even get started, one thing I want to remind you, I'm going to move this up here, is that x to the one half is actually the square root of x x to the one third is actually the cube root of x. And if I were to write something like x to the three halves, I would say that's the square root of x to the third. Or I could also say that is the square root of x raised to the third power. So in the course, I will not consistently be using one or the other. I'll do whichever one is easiest in that particular problem. So at this point, we get a lot more flexible with how we do our algebra because we do whatever needs to be done to make the problem easier for us. All right, so for the first example, we're going to be simplifying 5x to the third over y squared, and this is going to be to the negative third power. So if you guys recall your exponential rules, when you have an exponent raised to another exponent, you just need to multiply them together. So this five does not have the exponent of three. It actually has its own exponent of one. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna take this exponent on the outside and I'm gonna multiply it by all the exponents on the inside. So I've got five to the negative third, x to the negative ninth over y to the negative sixth. And then if you guys recall your exponential rules, whenever you have a negative exponent, um, it really just means it needs to be on the other side of the fraction. And so I'm going to rewrite this as 5 to the positive third, x to the positive ninth, y to the positive sixth. Right? Um, now here you could leave it like this. This is a good answer. Um, 5 to the third is 125, I believe. Let me double check. Yep. So I'm going to go ahead and write this as y to the sixth over 125 x to the ninth. Uh, and I'm just going to leave it like that. All right, example number two. negative 32 x to the negative fifth to the negative three fifths power. Um, and there's a couple different ways you can work with this. So, and I guess there was a couple different ways we could have worked with that first one. Like I chose to uh, multiply the exponents first and then I chose to kind of flip it is how I think of it we could have um, used the negative of this exponent and just inverted this and kind of left the three out there but put the y squared on top and put the five and the x to the third on the bottom, knowing that that's what that negative was gonna do. It's kind of up to you. Um, so that the approach I used here, I might not use here just because um, I think the fact that this is negative is messing with me a little bit because it looks different. So what I'm actually gonna do this time 
is I'm going to think of this already as a fraction because I know that's what negative exponents kind of do. And so I'm going to put a 1 on the top, and I'm going to write this as negative 32x to the negative fifth to the three fifths. So if you can see, all that I did is I wrote this as a fraction, and I put this stuff on the bottom. Um, and that's one of your negative exponential rules. I'll go ahead and write it up here, is that if you have x to the negative 1, you're going to write that as 1 over x. So you still have the number of the exponent, you can just get rid of the negative. So these are kind of like two different ways of dealing with negative exponents. One is if all you have is a negative exponent, just move it to the bottom. If you have negative exponents in both places, you just kind of switch where they are. Move from the bottom to the top, move from the top to the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and do that first because the rational exponent is uncomfortable enough on its own. This allows me to feel a little bit better about dealing with it. Okay, so what I'm going to go ahead and do next is I'm going to deal with this fifth root thing that I've got going on in this exponent of 3. So if I rewrite this, I have 1 over the fifth root. I think I'm going to make this a fraction, actually. I've got the 32 on the top, and then on the bottom I've got this x to the fifth. So if you guys can see... What I did again is I said, okay, x to the fifth should be written as a fraction where that should be on the bottom. I forgot the negative with the 32. I'll go ahead and put that now. So I'm going to do the fifth root. Now, I could put um, parentheses on the inside of this and raise it to the third power, or I can put the parentheses on the outside of this and raise it to the third power. It doesn't matter what I do. What I have found is that typically, um, if I'm doing something like this, it feels a little bit easier for me to reduce it first, to take the fifth root first, especially when I recognize a number like 32 is pretty easy to do the fifth root of. So I'm going to do the fifth root first, then I'm going to raise it to the third. All right. So if I look at this, um, 32, if I think about what number times itself, 5 times equals 32, you might not recognize that, but that's 2. So I'm going to say the fifth root of 32 is 2. So I've got 1 over, on the top of the fraction I've got negative 2, and then the fifth root of x to the fifth is just x, so over x, and then all that stuff is being raised to the third power. All right, um, so at this point I can go ahead and cube each of those things. I've got 1 over negative 8 over x to the third. And then if you like to think of keep it, change it, flip it, you can do that. So we could say keep it, change it to a multiplication problem, flip the bottom, and simplify that. Or if you're the type where you like to take the bottom and just multiply by the reciprocal, you can do that as well. Whichever way you think of it is fine. And so we end up with x to the third over negative 8 as our answer. So that would be um, completely simplified in that I've gotten rid of all my negative exponents. I've simplified all my rational exponents and made sure that they're positive. All right. um, one last example problem. I'm going to say x plus y to the negative second. So this is going to be kind of similar to example two. I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite that negative exponent so it's positive. Um, very common for students here to want to distribute that two. And you can't do that. It's not like example number one. The difference up here is that with example one, this was a multiplication problem, right? Five times x to the third. Um, you can distribute exponents there. As soon as you have addition or subtraction, you can no longer distribute your exponent. So we could say this is a good final answer right here. They might have left it like that. Or, if you feel like you need to do something with it, then you would have to write down how many times you have that set of parentheses. So, exponent of 2, write it twice and FOIL it. Exponent of 3, write it three times and FOIL it. Exponent of 4, write it four times and FOIL it. Um, and so this one, if I was to simplify it further, then I could say x squared plus 
xy plus another xy plus y squared. So different ways you can do it. Um, in the summer assignment, um, one thing I ask you to do is anytime you have an expression with a rational exponent, like here we got rid of the rational exponent when we simplified, um, but it says to do any problem with a rational exponent should be um, expressed both ways. So that means that in your final answer, if you still had a rational exponent, I could see that you wrote it this way and this way, or you wrote it this way and this way, just to show that you understand that you have the ability to switch back and forth between the answers. Um, so we'll go ahead and do one on the page just so you can see like exactly what I mean by that. So for example, with this one right here, um, we can go ahead and get rid of that negative by putting one over this. So four X squared minus 12 X plus nine to the positive one half. So that is us, that is a good final answer. You can't distribute that one half, you can't square root, square root, square root, that's not possible. So, and then this is not one where you could write it out like twice and foil it, because it's a one half, not a two. You can't write a parenthesis half a time, that's weird. So this is a good final answer, that's the um, rational exponent, and then if we wanted to write it as a radical, and we could say 4x squared minus 12x plus 9, just leave it as a square root. Now we could get even a little bit crazier than this if we wanted to rationalize this problem. And what I mean by rationalize is to not leave a radical on the bottom. Then to rationalize this problem, you have to multiply by that radical on the top and the bottom. So if you guys recall, um, probably in trig and pre-calc, if you had like one over root two and you needed to rationalize that, and go ahead and I'll show you this one. We'll make this one example four. So if you had to rationalize like one over root two, if you guys recall, you would just multiply it by root two over root two. And then on the top, you'd get root two, and then on the bottom, you'd get two, and you'd be done. So in calculus, this answer would be a multiple choice answer. This answer right here, without rationalizing it, would be totally fine in the free response section. So um, the, uh, the skill is necessary. You need to be able to do it, but you don't have to do it every time in calculus. So if we're taking that problem that we're looking at, this is number eight, and we're thinking about what would this look like if I rationalized it. Then we would be multiplying by that radical on the top and the bottom. And it would be the exact same problem, it just looks terrible. So a terrible looking version of that. So the square root times one is just the square root. And then down here, when you multiply those two square roots together, they cancel each other out and you just get four X squared minus 12 X plus nine. Um, I have not seen in calculus, somebody take something like this and simplify it, but I have seen problems where this process was involved in getting a common denominator that helped you simplify the problem and be able to work with it. So this is a skill set you would need to have. So when you're working on the packet, it would be good if you had an answer like this to rationalize it. But this is what I meant in the instructions when I said write it both with the rational exponent and with a radical. That's what I meant.